Hi, I'm Jared Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory, and today I want to talk about a treatment for long COVID. So if you have lingering effects, lingering negative effects after COVID, typically this is fatigue, but it can also be some kind of cognitive disruption, maybe some musculoskeletal pain, maybe some uh, issues with kind of a breathing, then this one is for you. Uh, last week, over the week, there were a lot of there was a lot of news about some new papers coming out showing just how bad long COVID is in the United States. There are probably 10 million people who are suffering from long COVID right now, and that includes a lot of children. So I basically, after hearing this all week, I wanted to find a little bit of good news to talk about. So I searched PubMed.gov yesterday and uh, found some good news that I wanted to share, basically showing that there are some tools that are being developed to help with the problem of long COVID. This one in particular was a study that was published uh, last month that shows lotus naltrexone works well for treating long COVID. So I wanna describe the study, I've got it right here. I'm gonna show you what they found. I'm gonna give you my interpretations and I'm gonna tell you how you might be able to use this information if you are one of the many people who are suffering from this disorder, or if you know someone who is suffering from this disorder. So here's the paper. This is a group out of Miami. I do not work with most of these individuals. I do know uh, Nancy Klimas, Dr. Klimas, quite well. Uh, Dr. Klimas and I work in very similar areas. We work in the same populations, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, Gulf War illness, long COVID. Uh, the main difference is where I typically go into more neuroimaging, Dr. Klimas does more cellular-based uh, analyses looking at the immune system, but we do very similar work that's very complementary. And um, so I'm glad to see her working in this field. This was done in the Miami VA healthcare system, and this is a retrospective analysis, which means it wasn't a clinical trial that they designed from the ground up to test lotus naltrexone. They looked back at the medical health records to look at individuals who were given these drugs as part of their treatment. And then they looked over the records to see if it basically worked or not. So again, not a clinical trial, but they did want to answer the same question as a clinical trial would, answer, would ask, which is what treatments work for long COVID? So just a different approach to doing that. So here are the treatments that they tested. They, they contrasted four different treatments, lotus naltrexone, amitriptyline, duloxetine, and physical therapy. You can see that the sample sizes, so you can see in red the treatments, and then in parentheses are the number of people receiving each treatment. So this was a small sample size study with only 24 people receiving a lotus naltrexone, for example. But let me tell you really briefly about these four treatments, only just a little bit of information just to so you can recognize what these treatments do. First, lotus naltrexone. Uh, LDN is one of my favorite pharmaceuticals, which may sound weird, but I've been working with it for 20 years. Uh, way back, uh, quite a while ago, there was two of us working with lotus naltrexone a lot for chronic disease. I was using it for fibromyalgia, and my colleague Jill Smith was using it to treat Crohn's disease, which is an inflammatory disease of the bowel. And we both found very similar things, and it worked quite well for both conditions. And so it suggested that lotus naltrexone works in the brain, which was the stuff I was looking at, but also works to reduce inflammation in the body, which is what Dr. Smith was looking at. So really cool work from a, a while back. Uh, it basically works by blocking toll-like receptor 4 on microglia. These are immune cells in the brain that can become agitated and start to pump out pro-inflammatory chemicals that make you feel really bad, chiefly make you feel fatigued and can also cause pain and, and cognitive disruption. Lotus naltrexone can block the receptor that's responsible for that microglia agitation, and it can reduce the excitability of the microglia, and so they stop producing those chemicals. So basically, lotus naltrexone reduces fatigue and reduces uh, chronic pain, among a few other things. It can improve uh, sleep, and it can improve cognitive disruption. So that's lotus naltrexone. Amitriptyline is an antidepressant. 
it it's a it's a complex drug. It's an old drug. It's been FDA approved for a long time, probably 1960-ish. So we've had it for a long time. One of the first uh, antidepressants that was used. It's a tricyclic antidepressant which means it has three modes of action. It hits three different systems. It actually hits more than that, but at least three. But the main idea is that it increases serotonin levels. And when you boost your serotonin levels, you can boost your mood. So that's how it's used to treat depression, typically. Then there's duloxetine. And duloxetine is an SNRI, which is a serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. Similar idea, but it basically increases the levels of serotonin and norepinephrine in the synapse, and that can also boost your mood. This is a newer drug. I wouldn't call it new, but it's certainly newer than amitriptyline. The physical therapy, we don't know much about. It was not described in the study, and so I can't say for sure what they used. I imagine that it was physical therapy standard of care that was probably individualized to handle the particular complaints of each individual. So again, we don't know a lot, but I would, I would assume that this is uh, pretty typical uh, physical therapy approaches to respiratory issues and musculoskeletal issues and maybe fatigue. The outcome is kind of a vague outcome, but you know, basically what they were looking at is did the patient report feeling better? after taking one of these treatments for a month. That's the outcome. So did they, did they say their fatigue got better, their cognitive function improved, their pain was improved, or, or their feelings of their breathing efficacy, was that improved? And if one of those four things got better in the patient's view, they considered that a responder. So let's look at the effects. Which one did best? So here are the four treatments. We see uh, at the bottom, you can see the four treatments, and on the y-axis, you can see, or the, on the left side, you can see the percentage of patients who responded to each of the treatments. So we see that the one that had the best response rate was lotus naltrexone, with 67% of patients saying that they felt better, they were improved after taking LDN for a month. Then amitriptyline at 61%, so both of these over half of the individuals taking it were improved. And then we have uh, physical therapy at 45% and duloxetine at 35%. So physical therapy and duloxetine had less than half response rate, whereas LDN and amitriptyline had more than half response rate. So if I was looking at all these, you know, in terms of determining on an individual level which one to use, that's a discussion between you and your physician. But in general terms, this suggests that if you're going to try one of these four, you're most likely to respond to either LDN or amitriptyline. And you might choose either one of those as your starting treatment for your long COVID. Although lotus naltrexone clearly had a little bit of an edge, had a better response rate than amitriptyline. That aside, there's another reason why. Of those two, I would recommend lotus naltrexone before amitriptyline. I say this carefully and with a little hesitation because sometimes as a scientist, I may say things that may contradict what your clinician may tell you. And when your physician tells you something different than what I tell you, the physician wins because the physician knows your meds, knows your comorbid conditions, knows your health history. They have a lot more information, and I don't know you and your health history, and so you have to go with what your physician says. That being said, my concern with amitriptyline are the side effects and the adverse events. So because of side effects, even though they both seem to have worked, I think the risk of side effects are much greater with amitriptyline, and that's why I would suggest trying lotus naltrexone first if your PCP is on board with that. As I said, amitriptyline is quite old. It has, it can have some major side effects. First of all, it's a very important drug. A lot of people get considerable benefit from that. So I'm not knocking the drug, but it does have some risks of side effects. There's a black box warning for suicidal ideation, which is more seen with younger populations, young adults and adolescents. Even with that aside, 
you know, amitriptyline is likely to change your mood. Now, sometimes that's what you want, but if you are not depressed, if you don't have major clinical depression, then in those cases, I kind of have a golden rule. One of my golden rules in clinical psychopharmacology is if your mood is pretty much intact, don't take a drug that's going to impact your mood because there's too much of a risk that it's going to make your mood worse. And so if you're just having problems with, with general malaise and pain and fatigue, but you don't feel de significantly depressed, um, I personally in that situation would stay away from um, antidepressants in that case. But again, your physician may uh, disagree. Now, with the mood stuff aside, amitriptyline still has a lot of side effects. You are likely to gain weight. There's a lot of GI issues for some people, dizziness, heart problems, and there's a pretty long list. And so, you know, you want a drug that works, but you also want a drug or treatment that doesn't give you a lot of new things that you have to worry about. And amitriptyline does have a long list of side effects. Now, I will note that the dosage used for long COVID is pretty low, uh, about 10 to 20 milligrams of amitriptyline. And at that dosage level, most of the side effects should be, um, the problem should be mitigated quite a bit with that low dosage. So that, <clears throat> that can help. But if we move to lotus naltrexone, these side effects just don't exist. They're, they're not there. Lotus naltrexone has a very short side effect list. And it's basically, as far as we can tell, there's one main side effect, which is you have a increased chance of having more vivid dreams. They're more colorful and they can be more realistic. Probably about 20% of people have these more vivid dreams. It doesn't seem to be associated with any poorer sleep. So we don't know what causes it. It typically goes away after a few weeks. We don't know what it means. It's just more vivid, colorful dreams. As side effects go, that's a pretty uh, pretty easy one to deal with. So for that reason, I would typically go to Lotus Naltrexone or suggest that given the data that's presented in this paper, that's what I would suggest. Now, again, in your particular case, there may be a reason why you can't take lotus naltrexone. Maybe you're taking a lot of opioids that could conflict with it. Or your physician may say that you need to take amitriptyline because you don't just have long COVID. You also have depression. You also have sleep disorder. And amitriptyline might help all three of those. And he might or she might recommend that you take that instead. So again, I'm not giving individual advice. I'm just talking in general generalities. So let me give you some caveats and then let me tell you what you can do with this uh, with this new study and the information. First of all, the caveats. Uh, again, this is not a clinical trial, so it's not designed to control all the sources of variance and all the noise. For example, these people might have gotten better anyway. We don't know that it's the treatments for sure that made them feel better because there's no placebo control. That's one issue. The sample size is quite small. As I mentioned before, <clears throat> you know, I really need to see about 30 people per group before the estimates start to stabilize. And I need to see about 65 people per group before uh, it, that most of those fluctuations are gone. And really, I'd like to see about 100 people per group. And usually at about 100, the estimations are are locked in, and you can be pretty confident that those would hold even if you ran hundreds and hundreds of more people. But at 25 or so individuals, you don't know. If we ran another 25, those bars could have changed, and the number one treatment might switch, and it may not be lotus naltrexone. So just a small sample size. The authors would not argue with that at all. They know it's a small sample size. But this is still a very important study because it gives us some really intriguing information that can be used to now do a properly powered clinical trial with enough people in it to be confident in the results. The, the last caveat about the paper is I couldn't find any mention of side effects or adverse events for any of the treatments. And I don't know if that's a problem where the physicians and clinicians don't put that information in the medical health records. In the, in the electronic health records. I don't know. All I know is that they're not in the paper or in the supplementary materials. And regardless of the reason, I, you know, it's hard to recommend something without looking at 
adverse events and side effects. For a treatment to be worth it, it has to be efficacious and it has to have manageable side effects. And so I would have liked to have seen that information, although I'm sure there's a good reason why it's not here. As we get larger studies, side effects, it has got, they have to be closely um, evaluated. So basically, this is a very interesting study. I believe the results, they are similar to what I probably would have predicted if someone said, hey, what do you think would happen with these four treatments and long COVID? And so I think, uh, I think it's a pretty well done in, in an important study, and it gives us some important directions to go next. Now, what do you do with this? What I can tell you, again, not being a clinician, but I can tell you if, if I had long COVID and I was dealing with that and it was detrimental to me, I would probably print this paper. I would go to my PCP and I would say, look, I'm struggling with this long COVID. No one seems to know the best treatment. I would really like to try this low dust naltrexone and give it a shot for three months and see if it helps. It, it seems to have very low side effects. It's inexpensive. And so I, can we try it? Now, your physician may very well say no. That's logical and it's understandable. Physicians uh, don't like to use things that they're not familiar with and they're not comfortable with for obvious reasons because they don't know what to expect. And a lot of physicians just don't know enough about lotus naltrexone to feel comfortable prescribing it. So very possible your physician will not be willing to give you this, but it's worth trying. Now, if they are on board with trying it, then the typical dosages are 1.5 milligrams a day, 3 milligrams a day, or 4.5 milligrams a day. So I would stick with one of those three dosages. It has to be compounded at a pharmacy, at a compounding pharmacy. So they're not available at that dose. So a, a, a compounding pharmacist has to make the capsules for you. It's not that expensive though. I think it's typically $40 a month, maybe 60 at the max at, at the expensive range, but, but typically about 40 a month. And I would give it at least two months to see if it works. And you might have to change the dosage a little bit if it's not working, maybe a little bit higher. That's basically how you use it. Now, how can you get this paper? Um, I'm not sure if this paper is open access, but yesterday I was at home and I was able to download the full article and I wasn't logged in to the medical library system. And so at least as of yesterday, this was available. I don't know if it's going to be available forever, but I will put a link directly to the study paper in the description below. So you can try to download that and then you can take a closer look at the data and then maybe give that to someone if you think they need to see this um, information. So that's uh, basically it. I wanted to share some good news, let you know that there is, there really is a lot of work going on right now. There's a lot of people working on this problem and uh, now we have some some tools, some things that can actually work to reduce the severity of long COVID. Um, keep an eye on this channel. I will be talking about important treatments as they come up. I'll probably alternate between stuff coming out of my lab and then things that are happening in other labs. So I want to have a, a balance between the stuff I'm doing that's exciting, but also there's a lot of exciting stuff happening that is outside of my lab. So I hope that's helpful. Um, that's it for now. Basically, I hope I can uh, see you next week. Uh, dial in to next week's talk. Again, I'm doing them every week and we have a lot to talk about. So I hope to see you soon. Thanks.